If you're considering making a switch to more minimalist type of shoes, there's a couple things that you should consider before you do so. First, your feet, your right foot and your left foot are not structurally symmetrical. There's gonna be probably a little bit of asymmetry in those feet, which means that your brain is not gonna recognize or sense the ground equally with both feet. Number two, neurologically, we don't sense the ground the same because we are asymmetrically designed. The right side of your body and the left side of your body are not the same, and I'm gonna show, I'm gonna explain this in the video. Number three, your brain finds flat floors threatening. Flat floors is not normal for humans. It's normal modern day, but it's not normal historically speaking. And I'm gonna show the impact of flat floors on an individual who has both minimalist shoes and more supportive shoes. So I'm gonna show how his hip flexors, how his body tension will either increase or decrease depending on whether he's walking barefoot, minimalist shoes, or a more traditional shoe that I alter a little bit with a little bit of sensory input. And you'll see how his hip flexors and his anterior pelvic tilt and his extension of his lower back completely change depending on what he's wearing. In the neuroscience book, The Master and His Emissary, the author is talking about how there's a certain stickiness to the right side of the body, which is the left brain. And what, they what, what is found is that your brain is very attracted to things on the right side. And when you're very attracted to things on the right side, you have a difficult time getting off of that right side and paying attention to the left side. And that's pretty much what my 300 videos on this channel has been demonstrating time after time. And it's the underlying uh, fund foundation of postural restoration, which is the discipline that I practice. So you can read these quotes, but summing it up, it's kind of hard to understand sometimes because of the language he's using. But what he's saying is, that the right side of our body, which means the left brain, is really, really, really attracted to the right side of the world and the ground underneath our right foot. So visual space and the ground underneath our right foot is what our brain senses. That's due to asymmetry. It senses the right side more than the left side because we are humans, we are lateralized. We have the right side and the left side are not the same. The right hemisphere and the left hemisphere are not the same. There's lateralized function meaning the two sides do something slightly, there's a lot of overlap, but there are certain specific differences, particularly in the language centers of the brain, which goes with the right hand and the right foot. So humans love to oversense the ground underneath your right heel and visual space on the right side, and that's what these videos are gonna show. One common argument in the debate about traditional versus uh, minimalist shoe is that the idea that the foot is somehow constrained by the more traditional shoes and that the minimalist shoe allows the foot more freedom. That might be true. However, there's a lot bigger constraints to worry about, more so than what the shoe is constraining the foot. So number one, look at this cadaver. You can see that this rib cage and the spine are oriented to the right. That's normal human state of affairs because we are right dominant. Every time I test, and the test that you see me do in the videos is basically just confirming that that individual is oriented to the right, just like that rib cage. That rib cage and spine are oriented to the right because of airflow, because of the bigger right diaphragm, which I'm gonna show next. Airflow and a brain, again, a brain that pays attention more to the ground on the right and right visual space, which orients us to the right. Everything about walking and being upright is about orientation. It's not a biomechanical issue primarily. It's an orientation issue which is driven off of sensory input. Number two, we are constrained by a bigger right diaphragm. If you look at this, at this uh, diagram, you'll see that the pelvis looks, if you look at the pelvis itself, it looks symmetrical, but go up one level and that right diaphragm is much bigger than the left diaphragm. And because the diaphragm is attached to the lumbar spine, and plural, diaphragms, they're not the same muscle. The right diaphragm attaches to the lumbar spine and underneath your rib cage. Every time you take a breath, the pull of respiratory air, the pull of air of your breathing apparatus is more to the right than it is to the left. That is why we are asymmetrically designed and all the organs inside us are asymmetrically designed. The heart is more on the left, the really big liver is more on the right. And the big liver actually helps keep the right diaphragm functioning more as a breathing muscle, where the left diaphragm starts to become more of a postural stabilizer. Number three, the visual system. As you, if you can't really understand what this diagram is showing, it's that 
both hemispheres, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of our brain, pay attention to right visual space, while only the right hemisphere pays attention to left peripheral visual space. So already we are all born with a brain that is paying way more attention to the right side. Hence the stickiness that the book Ian McGilchrist talks about in The Master and His Emissary. We get stuck to the right side where we'll just completely ignore the left side after all. And that's what we find in posture restoration all the time. That's why we stress left heel, left peripheral vision, because there is a deficit built into us. We are constrained by flat floors. Flat floors are threatening. Flat floors are not really found in nature. So you can see, what if you look at this picture of uneven earth, of real ground, it's hilly, it's perturbation, it is, uh, it's uneven. And that is actually, we talk about supination and pronation of the foot. The ground itself supinates and pronates our feet because the ground is coming up underneath that foot in different ways. It's like waves are rocking you back and forth. Gravity and the ground, uneven ground, is what supinates and pronates your foot and momentum from your upper body and arm swing. Walking is really not a muscular activity once you initially get started. Most of the activity after getting the, the push to start is more momentum and arm swing. It's controlled falling. You pick up one foot, you put it down. It's just controlled falling. And so even talking about it as if the issue is the, the foot itself is really not accurate. The foot is, a, is something to consider, but there's way bigger forces which I have just explained, at work in how our brain moves up. We don't really walk with our feet. The feet are the apparatus that allows us to take a step, but we really, we, we walk with our brain and we walk with sensory input. Once you are upright, you are moving your senses, your sensory, your sensors, your eyes, your ears, your nose. These are the things that your brain is using to navigate. Your brain, you have a behavior you have a want, a desire, and that's to move forward. That is not done through your feet. That is through your brain. Navigation, finding your way through the environment, that is a brain function. That is a neurological activity. The feet are not as important to navigation. They're important to push you forward, to actually, those are the things that we walk with, but you really walk with your brain and what your brain is desiring to do. If you look at this picture of this gentleman's feet, you'll see that the right arch is higher and the left arch is lower. That is the normal pattern. I see that all, I mean, I see that a lot and it's very, very normal. Why? Because when we're over, when our brain, because our brain is, likes the right side more than the left, when our body weight shifts over to the right side, and I'm gonna show a picture of what that looks like when someone doesn't really know what, if they're on their left foot or their right foot, the right foot will go into a more supinated position. So the arch comes up. The left foot, which I don't have a left foot, the arch comes down. That, that is being driven by what's going on up above and ground forces. They're just between what your brain is desiring and sensing and the ground forces coming up underneath your foot are smushing your foot into that position. The feet are not doing that on their own. That is not even biomechanical. That is sensory from visual space and the ground. And visual space and the ground determine what everything from here down what the rest of your body is going to do. One other thing you'll often see is an externally rotated right tibia because of the ground forces coming up underneath that right foot and the right foot tends to supinate as our body shifts over to the right. The right tibia with that supination, the right tibia will often turn out compared to the femur. So that's just another visual presentation of what I see all the time. If you're still with me and you like this video, can you please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. Thanks. So in this diagram, I'm just showing how a skeleton is imagined by the program designers. You look at that skeleton and yeah, symmetry. But in reality, because of our sensory systems and that bigger right diaphragm, the second picture is how your brain really senses things. Your brain will sense your right molars more than your left molars under 80% of conditions. That's normal you'll have that bigger right diaphragm. So just look at the green circles on the right side are bigger than the green circles on the left. 
you'll have more sense of your right hip joint. That right hip joint is more compressed because your body weight is shifted over to that right side, at least slightly. And your brain will sense that ground underneath the right foot more than the left foot. So all the compressive forces on our, are more on our right side than our left side. And if you cannot alternate those compressive forces, you are going to be tight. You're gonna go into the state of fight or flight with overactive hip flexors, which again is what I'm gonna show in the videos. Now, why are flat floors uh, threatening? Because they don't give your brain appropriate sensory input around the heel, around the heel, of, not directly underneath, around the heel, at the base level of the heel, but around it. Normal earth would. Remember that earth is gonna knock you back and forth and your brain will sense earth on either side of the foot as you navigate forward. The other thing is, if you look at this foot, which has a pretty healthy arch there, on a bare, on a bare floor, that arch has no sensory input. So there's no way to pronate. The only way you can pronate a right foot, which a left AIC or a right dominant person has trouble doing by birth, just by being human, that right arch never gets to sense the ground coming up underneath it because the arch is too high. Someone who has, who has um, lower arches, not completely flat, but lower arches, they might do better barefoot on flat floors and with minimal shoes for that matter. But uh, if you have a decent arch, you're not, your brain will not sense anything underneath that arch as you walk around on, bare, on, bare, on flat floors. And without pronation of the right foot, pronation, arch coming down, ground coming up, and then push through with the big toe, you can't transition to the other side and you are going to stay on your right side. In this book, Right Hand, right hand Left Hand, which is all about the origins of asymmetries in humans and the universe, he has a little chart, which I love, and, he, look, and you're gonna see it. Symmetry is associated with rest, binding, order, law, formal rigidity, and constraint. You are constrained by flat floors. Being barefoot or minimalist on a flat floor is going to constrain you even more. Again, that's the video I'm going to show. Asymmetry is associated with motion, with loosening, arbitrariness, arbitrariness, accident, life, play, freedom. Asymmetry allows us to, being asymmetric is not a problem. It's our gift. It allows us to move forward as humans move forward. Uh, asymmetry, I remember reading or listening to a concert and the conductor about a Beethoven, it was either a Beethoven or a Mozart, uh, symphony. He says, eh, this one wasn't so good because it was too symmetrical. It didn't go anywhere. I wrote that down about seven years ago and I was, because I loved it. And it explains the issue. Symmetry is lack of movement. Asymmetry is freedom and movement. A flat floor constrains you. The, ironically enough, a shoe with an arch and a more stable heel actually allows you to move with freedom on this constraining floor. Of, well, of your right foot. So do you sense the inside of your right foot or the outside of your right foot? Oh, I feel like, I feel like the outside. I feel like I'm sensing the outside. I'm feeling, I'm sensing the inside of this okay, one. Okay, so you feel inside of the left. Yeah. Forefoot. Yeah. And outside of right. Yeah, with like the heel. More heel though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so what he's sensing is the outside of his right foot and more of the heel and the inside of the left foot and more of the forefoot. And that is not the feet doing that. That is the position of his pelvis, which is forward on the left. It's also forward on the right, not as far forward. So he's still over to the right side. When the right, so that's what's creating, without going into the biomechanics of it, it's the position of this pelvis forward on both sides, which in PRI is called the uh, PEC pattern that is putting his feet into that position. That is determining what he is feeling from the ground underneath his feet, the pressure from the ground. And it's the pressure from the ground coming up underneath our foot that our very blind brain has to sense to figure out how we move forward. But even this position is not biomechanical. This is dr being driven by human asymmetry and biased sensory inputs from the right side. In this video, he has his socks on. I just had him walk down the room and back, and this you're gonna see his testing. So his right leg does not go down. His hip flexors are overactive. And then I flip him over, now I do his left leg. Same thing. 
he cannot adduct. That test is telling us that both sides of his pelvis are forward, and when a pelvis is forward in a flexed position, which that's hip flexion, the legs cannot adduct because the way they sit in the hip joint itself blocks the leg from going down. That's an anterior pelvic, if you wanna call it anterior pelvic tilt, do that. But it's on both sides, but more on the left. And the important thing about this is, because this goes back to one of the arguments about, oh, when you switch to a minimalist shoe, they feel so much more calf muscle and they feel their calves really working. I don't know that's a good thing because what's gonna happen is that pelvis is gonna fall forward on one or both sides. And once the pelvis is forward in a state of flexion, you will not have any glute or hamstring activity. Not appropriate. You might feel something there, but it's gonna be eccentric activity. It's, it's, they're being pulled apart. So you have no power and everything is gonna fall upon those calves and calves are gonna to start to hurt or get really, really tight. And then tight calves prevent, well, I'm not gonna to get too much into that yet because I'll, I'll just sum it up at the end. Uh, but uh, let's just leave it at that. His pelvis is forward on the left. It's also forward on the right, but more forward on the left. So in this video, he has normal sneakers on, but the, the normal sneakers, you know, the more supportive sneakers, they don't have really any arch. The heel is stable, which is good, but there's really no arch sense. So he still cannot pronate really on either foot. So what I did was I took this little plastic heel cup and you can see a picture here. I put the heel, he put the heel cup on his left heel and he put a little bit of paper towel underneath the arch of his right foot. And you're gonna see the difference. So I had him walk and here we go. <laughs> now his right leg goes down. and his left leg goes down. His pelvis is now neutral. So just by doing that, by putting, the, by putting the paper towel underneath the arch of the right foot and giving him more sense of his left heel, which our biased brains and senses have more trouble feeling. Remember, we have a lot of right heel and a lot of left arch. What we don't have is a lot of right arch and left heel. Just by doing that, turned off his hip flexors and his pelvis is now in a neutral state because he can adduct both legs. Now he's gonna put his minimalist shoes on and he's gonna walk and I'm gonna retest and we'll see what happens. Can't go all the way down. It was better than the first time but it can't go all the way down. And on the left side, forget about it. He's right back into the pattern. So when he walked with his minimalist shoes, because he's not getting that same neurosensory input as when I had him with the, the paper towel and the left heel sense, he tightened up again. And so he is not, he cannot wear those minimalist shoes in his life right now because he lives in New York and he lives on flat, he exists on flat floors and flat roads he will tighten up. His hip flexors are overactive the moment he puts those minimalist shoes on because his brain loses sense of the ground. So this diagram kind of sums things up. So if you want to think from a biomechanical perspective and an upright balance perspective, from a vestibular perspective, your brain is, has to integrate sense from your visual system, which are frequencies of light, from your auditory system, frequencies of air molecules hitting your eardrums, and frequencies, fr well, frequencies from your hips, that alternation. You need two for frequencies, a right and a left, an up and a down. So when your brain senses alternation of compression between your right hip and your left hip and the right ground and the left ground, those are frequencies also. When you lose sense of the ground, and this what, that's what this chart is showing, because what they did was they perturbed the ground underneath, in, underneath people and it just shows how each individual brain chose to react to stabilize them. And when you lose sense of the ground, you see this mixed strategy. This is one of the ways that people will do it. And you'll see the red arrows are pointing to the gastroc. So at the bottom, you'll see the, the third one down, the third arrow down, the gastroc becomes highly overactive. The second arrow up is the abdominals. Now, you may think that's a good thing, but I know from what they're showing, those abdominals are not being used concentrically as breathing muscles at that point. They're being eccentrically lengthened and being used for postural stability. That's not what you want. That's why when people can't, ex when they can't exhale without their rectus, without their six pack abs tightening up, 
they're using those abs for, uh, for stability, for upright function rather than for breathing. And that has to change. Otherwise, they're going to stay in this upright, extended, patterned posture. And then the third one is the SCMs, the neck, ex neck flexors, forward head posture. So those muscles taken together are indicating a body that's going into a state of extension on one or both sides of the body and extension is the problem. That's a forward head posture. Everyone knows you don't want to be in a forward head posture, but that's what that's indicating. Pelvis is going to fall forward because those hip flexors and the gastrox are overactive. Those videos are exactly what happens when you lose sense of the ground. Now, biomechanically, this is also a problem because one of the things that people, like I mentioned before, one of the things that people comment on is that when they switch to minimalist shoes, uh, they really feel their calves working really, really hard. And they're interpreting that as a good thing. I don't interpret that as a good thing either. I don't really think you should feel your calves whatsoever when you're walking. You really shouldn't feel much because again, walking is more momentum than anything else. Running is different. Running is a different thing. I'm talking only about walking. You need to heel strike when you walk. If you're walking barefoot on hard floors, you're probably going to be more on the balls of your feet. But the moment you do that, that's going to tip your pelvis forward into an anterior pelvic tilt, which is called extension, which is the pattern that we're talking about in here. So if you're overworking your gastrox and your, 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 or your feet muscles, or your, if you feel your Achilles, whatever it's going to be, if you're feeling that too much, you may interpret that as a good thing because calves do work when you're walking, especially when one foot is in the air and the other one is stabilizing you. That's where calves really have a lot of their activity. And then the tibialis anterior, the front of your shin, pulls that toe back towards you so you don't hit your toe on the ground. So as you step forward, the tibialis anterior will pull that toe up so you can step and not stumble. But again, it's, not, it's more momentum than anything else. So if you're feeling too much strain, or like they're working too hard. Again, people may interpret that as good, but in my mind, because of what I've been doing for the past 11 years, and I've seen this over and over and over, I just honestly, this is, this is the honest truth. I have not had anyone come in that was doing good, well with a minimalist shoe. If they're in pain, they had to get out of the minimalist shoe before they could get out of pain. They needed something that was giving, that was regrounding them. And I know that sounds counterintuitive because you would think that uh, a bare foot or a more minimalist shoe would give you a better sense of the ground, but it does not because, especially if you have a higher arch, because again, I don't care about what your brain is sensing underneath the heel. I care what your brain is sensing around the lower edges of the heel and underneath the arch. And those two areas are not going to be stimulated if you're walking on flat floors barefoot or in a minimalist shoe. If you wear minimalist shoes outside in a real earth, in a park, or as you're hiking, if that's comfortable for you, that would be probably better because the earth is supinating and pronating your foot for you. But when you're on flat floors, the minimalist shoe is not really going to help. And so if you're in the Northeast and you're living like I live and most of the people that I deal with live, the minimalist shoe is really not going to help them. And it's going to tip their pelvis forward. And once that pelvis tips forward on one or both sides, the back has to arch. Once your back arches, your ribs have to flare up on one or both sides, your back arches, your body moves forward, and your head and neck, your head and neck are also going to end up coming forward. You're going to lose your, di your ability to breathe with your diaphragms because you're in this extended posture. You're going to be tight. You can no longer rotate. A extended spine can't rotate. So where are you going to rotate? It can't rotate through the mid-back where it should happen. So where are you going to rotate? You're going to blow out your SI joints. You're going to blow out your, you're going to create lumbar spine instability. But even more important, you're never going to get to your left side. If your hip flexors can't turn off because your feet are not getting, your brain is not getting proper sensory input, you're never going to transition from your right side, the dominant side where our brain likes us to be, to your left side. And your brain will be very content just keeping you over on this very safe right side, but it's going to break us down in the long run.